not easy to be on the last session of the day. I mean, everything, believe me, that I wanted to talk about today was all done from morning. There were so many great sessions there. And then I was just sitting there thinking, okay, I might not just keep repeating myself now, end of the day. I'm going to be saying the same things that people have had said the whole day. But unfortunately, it is what it is, right? Okay, now because this is the last session of the day, and just to make sure all of you are with me, should we just start the small warm up game? Yes. I'd like all of you to please raise up, if that's okay. Have you played the game, have you ever? Okay, so if you've done this, please sit up. Have you ever been in a team where they don't believe in retrospectives? Okay. Have you ever been in a team where they hate metrics? <laughs> Have you been in a team where they don't collaborate and they work in silos? Okay. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> then I'm in the right room. <laughs> okay, my name is Ramya and I work as an IT Quality Assurance Manager at Kona Craig's Global. And currently I'm also doing this interim role as a product owner for the Agile Core team or what we call the Clean Agile Center of Excellence and also a product owner for the Agile Coaching team. And today I'm going to be talking about finding your flow. What does it mean? Anybody? What do you think it would mean? <laughs> yeah, you don't have a definite answer. Believe me, I'm not here today to give you any answer. I'm here today to ask questions. Because the room is still with experts. And I'm no expert here, and I want to learn from you. So today I'm going to be sharing about our Agile journey in Kona Cranes and also maybe how we've been doing, what we've been doing right, what we've been doing wrong and what we've learned along in this journey. And this is not just related to work, I would like to also probably share a little bit of my personal journey. Because I resonate a lot with this topic finding your flow. It doesn't really actually just mean for work. Even for life, you need to always adapt change. I lived, and like you see, I'm from India, and then I studied in UK, and now it's been 13 years in Finland. We are in Pugutorala Viva Sobe, but I'm trying to get there. So, but then when I came here initially, it was very, very difficult. Difficult in the sense, I'm used to people talking all the time, and there was absolute silence. So initially it was very difficult. I didn't know how to navigate or how to even say hello to my neighbors. And then I realized, okay, this is one good thing. We need to also kind of understand and help people around. I started this association called the Indian Women in Finland. We are soon going to be 10 years now. And the reason it was started is to help integrate your Indian women who are here in Finland to the Finnish society. Believe me, there are a lot of highly skilled women out there and we are all most of you coming here because of trades, houses and we are having to start from scratch. And that probably resonates a lot with me with the topic finding your flow. Because no matter where you are in your journey, sometimes you have to start from scratch and go from the beginning and be adaptive to changes as well. And then I sat and thought, okay, what next? Is this now giving me the energy that I want? Do I know where I want to be? Am I in the right direction? Because it is not easy when you're in a different country, you are learning a new language, learning a new culture, wanting to be among them, or you want to be a leader in your field, so it's not easy. So to kind of understand all of that and navigate it is not easy. And sometimes you need to kind of have some manifestation and goals for your own self, what you want to do next, and then find your flow. That I will rush, which I have. I have done a lot of crazy things, and that was my list 40 before 40. I went skydiving, I went scuba diving. Believe me, I don't know how to swim also. So I have done crazy things like that, even did the Surkaba rowing. 
when I go on the swimming. This kind of gave me the confidence that every time I thought I couldn't do something, and it kind of gave me the constant thing that I want to continuously learn and continuously improve. Especially today, standing here in front of all of you, listening to all the expert speeches since morning, I think that kind of again resonates to the topic, finding your flow. So, maybe the first thing to start and think about is where you are, where you want to be. And as I represent Kona Cranes, a little bit about our Kona Cranes story as well. How many of you here know about Kona Cranes already? Okay. Then I wouldn't bore you too much with it. You know everything already, but then because I'm representing the company, so some numbers, we are doing very good. And this year, we have been doing really good. The numbers should say that. So active in 50 countries, about 19,500 supporting people, and we've had good sales and editor margin as well. And overall, this year looks very promising for us. And you already know, but we are mostly in three business segments, the industrial equipments, port solutions, and the services. And services is about 35%, port solutions 33%, and the industrial equipment is about 32%. But coming to Agile, where does it start, our Agile journey? Like I said, we started somewhere about 2019 when we thought about Agile and started our teams there. We have what we call as tribes, which is otherwise the trains. So we have eight tribes, and there are about 70 teams. And there are about 300 people working there in the teams and about 100 plus stakeholders. But when we started, there was a lot of noise. Are we agile? It, what model are we following? Is this Safe? Is this Spotify? I call it what we call as the vanilla agile that we have. We've taken the best of everything. Best of the Spotify model, best of the Safe model. And we are kind of working with our best model in the way of working. And the overall landscape, uh, if you see, we are having what we call as the 1K setup, where we kind of harmonize our ways of working. So it kind of is following the KC strategy, where all the processes fall under this 1K setup. Be it procurement, be it finance, be it product development, so all of the IT data falls under this 1K landscape. And like I said, we have a global setup. Uh, we operate in regions like APAC, EMEA, and also Europe. But our main IT help desk is in India. So there's a, lot of, there's a very big team there in India, and they work 24 hours, six days a week. And our ERP system is service now. So, but yeah, any major incidents or anything like that, uh, priority incidents come there and they are working very quickly with it, operating in many languages as well. Okay, what is that we want to do? Why are we calling ourselves Agile? That is the first question, are we really Agile? I mean, this is something we kind of <laughs> ask ourselves every now and then. Is this Agile? Do we want to be Agile? What is that we are doing? What is that we are trying to do? And again, that's, yeah, finding your flow. So, most important three values that we think that we should be driving, or at least we believe that we should be driving, us is the increased customer value, efficient delivery, and improved quality. I think that's the first step. You need to kind of have a vision where you want to be. So, what does finding your food now mean to you? Have you ever sat and thought about it? There could be a maze where you don't know where you are, where you want to be. It's time to sit, uh, sit down and question it, understand it and accept it as well. The times are changing uh, from, you know, suddenly we are going into cloud migration and then one side maybe there's a security update, one side there's compliance review. Times are changing and we need to kind of adapt ourselves to the change every now and then. So each time it's kind of very difficult and um, but the main thing to understand is 
Are the adaptable for changes? Is there a change resistance within the team? How are we kind of navigating that? And so finding the flow is kind of very important there. To know where to begin with and where to kind of go. Having a roadmap for that, having a strategy, having a vision to know what our end goal should be. And this is, like I said, not just for your team and work, but also for your personal life. It will resonate a lot. This is something very familiar to all of you, isn't it? In recent times, how many of you own a Tesla here? Okay. <laughs> so, there's so many things up to change. Suddenly there's Tesla, and then there's what happens to General Motors then? Okay, they then come up with what's called the Chevrolet Bolt. Did I get the car for it? Is that the electrical car that they have? Okay, I'm not good at it. Anyways, and then maybe this Netflix, so Disney gets a little tense there, not knowing what to do, and then they come up with Disney Plus. So there is change, and there's disruption to change as well. But what is constant is kind of always having this continuous improvement, continuous learning. And thinking about the innovation, how to move forward. I think that is one step where it's very important to navigate even at the organization level. Okay. I have done my Lean Six Sigma black belt. And so I always try to compare the theory with what does it mean in the Lean concept as well. We talk a lot of things, right? But how to move forward? I mean, what does this all actually mean? So then you can think about first to improve the flow, first remove the waste. The three ends here mean is eliminating waste, the Muda, Mura and Mori, where you can actually remove the useless activity or any overburden activity that you have or uneven activity that you're doing. What does this mean now in the IT context? Anybody? Any, any examples? What kind of waste do you think you can remove? Some of the meetings. That's a very good example. Some of the meetings. And I think Yako was kind of explaining it very well earlier as well about the meetings and who do you invite and things like that. But yeah, eliminating waste can be like sometimes like for the Muda, for example, how many of you would have like developed a feature which the customer is not using anymore? Thinking about the end customer value, whichever is not adding any value, those are the things that you can eliminate as please. How much documentation, documentation we do, endless amount of documentation, which has nothing to do with the end customer. Or the test cases that we write and then rewrite without thinking about the refactoring correctly to begin with. And maybe to think about the lead time, the amount of time, the waiting time that you spend for each activity, and so on. So there could be different things that we have. And the first step is probably to think about how you eliminate waste. But again, we have this iceberg effect, isn't it? I think of it as the 80-20 rule. 20% is what we really care about. We want to know what the metrics are, we want to know what the process is, what our return on investment is going to be. But what actually is important is what happens beneath the iceberg. That kind of enables everything above. So are you constantly improving? Are you constantly learning? How are you up to the market? How are you kind of um, adding value to the customers? How are you getting enough feedback loops? So these are the things which, with the 820 rule, very important to think about elements which are beneath the iceberg and not the ones which are above the surface alone. Okay, that was a lot of bullshit that we've been talking all this while, but where to start? Yes, there's a big elephant in the room, but how do we slice it? Where do we begin? I think that's the big, biggest question or biggest problem that we have. How do we scale from there or how do we begin with? Is it vertical slicing or is it horizontal slicing? Or, there's so many things.
things that we need to kind of plan and decide before we actually start working with it. And I think that's still the first step. Once again, coming back to finding your flow. Question it. Why are we doing this? Is this the right thing that we need to do? Do we have enough resources? Do we have the correct budget? Do we have the correct timeline? Is this really a child? Are we going back to waterfall? <laughs> you know, sounds familiar, isn't it? So, slicing it and beginning with the right piece is very important. Okay, but for this, what, did, where can, what is most important or where can we start with? We all have heard of innovation planning, but do we really have time for that? I've heard a lot of teams complaining to me like, okay, you've been saying a lot of things, but we are just loaded with so much of work. We have an important release coming next week, and we really don't have time for this innovation or this continuous improvement and things like that. Isn't that the case most often? But this is something which is very important and something where you really need to spend the time and plan in advance. And maybe to also kind of um, think about anything that you measure or any success rate you get, the starting point is for the tangible continuous improvements that you have. How many of you here have been to India? Okay, some hands there. How do you like the traffic there? <laughs> wow, I didn't expect those hands there, so okay. Maybe this one story. Um, in India, we recently had this CEO called Babish Agarwal, and he started what's called the Ola Caps. Ola stands for the Spanish for hello. So, why did he start that? He was like going to a forest, and he was like going on a journey, and he suddenly had a battle, not battle, a fight with the driver and the driver just stopped him in the middle of the forest and said, okay, now you find your way and then he left him. That gave him the idea that he needed to start with taxi services. Don't go and fight with a taxi driver in India. <laughs> Don't ever do that. But innovation can start at any point with any smallest idea from there. And his main thing that he had was he started using the apps where he started using the GPS and people started connecting with that, and like how you have a Yango and the Bolt and all that. For India, that digitalization was a big thing, a big step, where you can do the payment there, where you can like book the drivers there. Of course, when you do the SWOT analysis, it has its own threats where sometimes the drivers can be unpredictable, right? So he did have his own ups and downs. But from that, he built from Ola cabs to Ola Tuk Tuk or autos, what we call, to all our bicycles, and on on. So with the innovation, there's no end. And with that, every time you need to question it as well, why are we doing this? Do we, even if you don't have time, that is why we started with what we call as the innovation and planning week. So initially we did have, again, resistance for this innovation planning week, and then we started some pilot teams and started to think about tangible improvements that they could have on table to plan this innovation planning week. Other than that, yes, Kona Cranks is doing a lot of innovation things as well. We have our innovation day, we have the accelerator program, open to ideas. Um, most importantly, giving a lot of importance for this innovation because that's where everything starts. But one main question the teams also asked what do you want us to do in this innovation planning week? We've been doing all of that already in our day-to-day -day -day work and we don't have time. So then we adopted this uh, team and technical agility assessment and here you can already see what, what are the things that we were kind of measuring. Of course the teamwork, the DevOps aspect, the built-in quality and a lot of those things. But the most important thing here with this assessment is that Two things. It gave us an idea on what are strengths and also gave us an idea of what was the opportunities. Of course you might ask, are these people doing this correctly? It could be that, that you know, they might think that they are very good in something, but that team is actually not. Definitely 
that is one thing that could always happen and I think that's where the agile coaches come in to kind of navigate and help the team with that. But I think this is one good step or starting point to understand where you are and where you can identify the problems and how to begin the journey as such. So far, the old, early indications for us were really positive. Uh, like I said, we still have a great journey ahead. Um, but the most important thing is that people kind of um, accepted this and they started identifying what the different levels are from level 1 to level 5 in case you have that to understand where they kind of stand and what the opportunities are or what they need to kind of work on. I think that for that it was a good platform to start with. Um, and for us in Kona Grace, these are the four things that we are currently uh, doing very well. Of course, the collaboration that we have with business and IT and our so-called Agile Handbook. I think that's like the um, place where we have the answer to most of the questions that we need related to maybe your learning and training, about the upcoming planning process or anything like that. So that's kind of the main thing. And other than that, we have had the quarterly planning or what we call as the tri-planning processes. And that's been going very uh, positive as well. Yearly ones, we have a face-to-face -face tribe planning event and we're about 300 to 340 people come in person. It's like a very big event that we do and um, we have the pre-planning the weeks before and the planning happens on that day. And a lot of collaboration between the teams happen as well, which is going very well. That's a very busy slide. I've been talking about flow and continuous improvement for a long time and believe me, I don't like this slide. <laughs> And that's how it is. When you talk about this, people are like, okay, you're not saying anything new. We know all of this. So what? This sounds familiar, right? So what? What are we supposed to do next? And then, this is what one story that I heard recently. There's this boy called Chris Nikik. And he recently, not recently, 2020, he won the Ironman in Florida. So why am I saying this? So this boy is down with Down syndrome. And he's had an open heart surgery when he was four years old. And he's had multiple year surgeries. And he's 17 years old now. And his rule of thumb, when he wanted to sit down and manifest what he should do, where he wanted to be, he suddenly decided he wanted to you know, join this Ironman in Florida and win that. And at that point, he had this one percent rule. Every day, I will be one percent better than the previous day. So that's how he tried to improve himself one person every day than the previous day. And finally, he actually won the race. That's something. So when people ask about continuous improvement and all of this that we're doing, we don't expect any drastic change within, within a day. Think about the tangible improvements that one can do and start small. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be something big. And that's where you need to slice the elephant. We've been also using a lot of flow metrics and this is one slide I think everybody would hate. But again, this is to kind of remind don't just go with that. <laughs> Think about the outcome and where you want to be. Understand your bottlenecks and challenges from the metrics. And just don't blindly follow the metrics alone. It, of course, gives you a transparency. It helps you understand better. It helps you understand to improve. It helps you understand to learn as well. It builds your efficiency, predictability, and all of that. And that's why it's kind of important. But it's quite also important that the teams don't manipulate these metrics, because that also is quite something when you say, OK, we need to finish it in this quarter. How many of you have had teams where they're not able to finish it in that quarter, and then it carries forward? But for the sake of it, when they want a good hit rate, 
they mark the stories as done, where even when it's not done. That's not what we want. We want to understand what are the bottlenecks, what are the challenges, how we can move forward. I think this is a good starting point for that. Another thing that we've had for the continuous improvement is retrospectives. We think of that as a place to get feedback, right? You all know, only when you have some kind of feedback can move forward. And so we did this retro of retro. Once again, a lean method of the fishbone study. So how many of you familiar with the fishbone study here? Okay, that's nice. So it means asking the question, why? Why are we doing this? Okay. Why? Ask the question, why, five times. And sometimes even more than five times till you actually get the answer. And in the retros, the common thing that we get is, okay, it's so monotonous, nothing happens after the retrospectives, there's no action points after the retrospectives. I'm saying the same thing for every retro, nothing is moving forward, there's no time for retrospectives. Does it sound familiar? But maybe things to think about there. What are your facilitation methods? What is that you want to actually achieve in that particular retrospective? How can you do something new? Maybe you can change the facilitator, maybe you can change the technique. I once had somebody asking me that, okay, I don't want to use this tool because we can't give anonymous retrospectives. That's a red flag for me. Okay, you can give anonymous retros, but if you're not able to tell your team how you actually feel, then that's no good to start with. We talk about psychological safety and how important it is and the transparency and things like that. So if you're not able to tell your team, okay, you're not doing a good job or you are not doing a good job, most importantly, it's not about pointing fingers there. It's about doing it together. So good retrospectives or maybe having a good discussion within the team is a good starting point for continuous improvement. And for us, we believe the success criteria for that, like I said, is having a good facilitation technique, thinking about the results. If you have good action points after the retro, then maybe, yeah, you'd have a good discussion. And having a collaborative workspace, getting everybody to discuss, that's quite important as well. There's no point in having a room full of people being quiet and you're the only one talking right now. <laughs> so, active engagement. These are the success criteria for a good retrospective. How many of you can resonate here with a good neural network? Everything starts with that, right? Having the empathy. Sometimes it gets difficult in teams meeting. You don't know what the other person is saying. How many of you have had this WhatsApp message where you kind of misunderstood a person, miscommunication? They might probably have said it in a different tone, but you might have had it read it in a totally different tone and you know, misunderstood the whole context. And that's all it starts with, having the empathy. Trying to understand, give them the benefit of doubt. And also, when you have a problem in front of you, understand the problem first. When you understand the problem first, you already solve the problem partially. And then, of course, you have how you define the problem, how you create, how you ideate, and how you move forward from that. And this is just not for work alone, it's for life also. Finally, we all want to be ahead in the race, isn't it? It's not that whether we are bicycling or we are going in a fast race car. That's not important. Being, even if you are just in a pedal cycle, finding the right balance, is what is important towards continuous improvement and towards finding your flow. There are a lot of factors which probably ends up in understanding the balance, how you constantly learn, because there's no end to it. 
You might fail today, but you are learning something from that for tomorrow. So yeah, with that, that's my bit. Thank you so much. And I hope that this will resonate a little bit with you and you're able to find your flow.